According to a report by the German business magazine Wirtschaftswoche, dated February 23, 2019, the Internet will soon be coming from space. Also, the international protest group Stop 5G on Earth and in Space writes that at least five companies intend to transmit 5G from space. This would be done with the help of satellites in low and medium Earth orbits, which would cover the entire Earth with strong, focused, and controllable beams. In the first part of the telephone interview, Dr. Barry Trower, a former microwave weapons expert with the British Royal Navy, reported on warfare with microwaves that have been in use since as far back as 1949. In today's second part, he speaks about the technical possibilities and hazards of 5G from space. This second part continues with the questions of how humans and nature can be manipulated by microwave radiations. For example, by provoking moods such as hopelessness, aggression, and suicidal thoughts using different frequencies. According to Dr. Trower, the planned 5G internet from space will act to slowly destroy every plant and thus also the soil on Earth, because it is the plants that keep the soil alive. Dr. Trower also explains that it is mathematically and theoretically possible to trigger earthquakes by means of microwaves. Finally, Trower addresses the question of who is responsible for the coming 5G radiation and what technical alternatives we have. We urge you to also view our other programs on 5G and distribute them generously. Contact us if you would like to receive regular news about the further development of 5G and to be informed about activities in your area. And now, part two of the telephone interview with Dr. Barry Trower. Is it possible to manipulate people or control people's minds through microwave radiation like 5G? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, you don't need 5G. You can do it with any G. Um, <clears throat> that is their first, that was the, the first use for them. Um, and this, this research is not new. And when I say this at conferences, people sort of open their eyes and look at me as if I'd grown another head. Um, <clears throat> this research was actually carried out and written up in 64 BC uh, by a Greek scientist living in Egypt by the name of Ptolemy, <clears throat> spelled with a P, P-T. Um, he, the, the Ptolemies were, were enormously clever scientists, and <clears throat> he would heat up different objects and then he would make like a solid wheel and put it in front of people's faces and drill holes around the wheel. <clears throat> and as the solid metals or other ores that, that he would heat up, other substances, um, he would spin the wheel in front of their eyes with the radiation the other side of the wood. So the radiation would come through and impulses go into the eyes and into the brain. <clears throat> and he wrote a paper on it, which is still used today, um, showing that pulses of radiation going into the eyes. And then it, it's, you, it was used as a party trick to make people dizzy and fall over, give them epileptic fits, uh, make them lose their temper. But... <clears throat> The, the, the pulses uh, used in warfare, uh, even in the Cold War, um, they could mimic the same symptoms in the body as morphine, marijuana, hunger, hopelessness, which would be suicide, um, aggression, and if you put the right pulse frequency in, that would become sexual aggression. Um, hallucinations uh, they, they could just make you just want to lay down and not move <clears throat> in fact there was a scientist at Yale University and I'm putting it politely I think he was expelled because they weren't happy with where he was going called, um, called uh, Jose Delgado and he wrote 
that any moods or feelings could be induced in the body. And he used all sorts of electromagnetic waves, including microwaves. <clears throat> and from Yale, he went to Spain and he could make, he, he using his microwaves, he could make a, he went into the bull ring and he could make a charging bull stop, just stop. Uh, and, and he said, you know, <clears throat> he demonstrated that he could make women sexually amorous. He could make uh, men uh, smash up the room they were in. Uh, he, as he said, all, all moods and all emotions can be induced. Now, that was back in the 70s. Now, you imagine what they can do today. Hmm. Yeah, obviously. Now let's let's have a look at um, outer space. In near future, a radiation field is supposedly to be built up for the Earth's surface from outer space by means of thousands of satellites. In your opinion, is it technically possible to comprehensively irradiate the entire Earth? Um, absolutely, uh, and I can tell you why. <clears throat> um, Around, uh, and there are different layers, but about 60 miles up, uh, you, you have the ionosphere, which, which is really layers of hydrogen and helium, which are electrical conductors. So what you can do, and it is already done today by the, in fact, there are 16, to my knowledge, There are 16 devices on the planet now, <clears throat> and using simple geometry and refractive index, uh, the most famous one is HAARP, H-A-A-R-P, um, in uh, Alaska. <clears throat> no, not Alaska. Um, is it Alaska? But North America. Um, is HAARP. And uh, you, what you can do is you can beam microwaves and pulse microwaves anywhere on the earth because it, it will the ionosphere will reflect it re reflect the microwaves just like a mirror will reflect light and in fact you can so it, the united states if they wanted to they could send a beam of microwaves into the ionosphere they could reflect it down um onto your trees, onto your cattle, onto your crops, um, and they could destroy them. Uh, and there is no reason why this would not work. <clears throat> and if you send up several, in fact, they're talking hundreds of thousands of satellites. And yeah. what you can do is you can microwave the whole planet. I mean, when you think you've now got sky satellites up, which supply television to sort of whole countries with huge footprints. Now, once you've got all these satellites up, and they're talking uh, hundreds of thousands, <clears throat> they are overlooking two things. The first is they are going to destroy every single living plant on the planet every single living plant. <laughs> and this is so, so, and I think this experiment was done in Germany, actually, and was written up by school children. <clears throat> and what they did, they, they just got an, an ordinary, these walkabout phones that, where you just pick a phone up and you walk about the house. Now, they transmit, even if the phone is hung up, um, they transmit all the time day and night. <clears throat> and what the children did, and it was in Germany, they, they grew some plants um, next to, or, or quite near, just one of these telephones that was plugged in. And they found the plants wouldn't grow. And it was a very weak signal. Uh, and their control, they, they grew plants outside, <clears throat> and they had watercress and all sorts of plants. And they found the plants were destroyed, and, and that has been duplicated and replicated. But you will, you will first destroy 
every plant slowly over the planet, either because you will weaken its resistance to bacterium or you will destroy the plant, probably both. <clears throat> you will destroy the soil because it is plants that help keep the soil alive. The other thing you will do is you will destroy every flying thing on the planet because at the moment they can fly to places where uh, you can fly to places where there are no microwaves and they can recover and they can, they can breed there. Once you saturate the planet, they will have nowhere to go. <clears throat> but mm. it, it gets even more serious than that. And the reason is, <clears throat> and a lot of people don't know this as far as the ecology of the planet goes, and that is that around 70% of a fish is tree. And the reason is that when leaves fall off tree in the autumn, they get washed down in the streams, the goodness, or they rot on the soil, and it runs by rain where it's dissolved. It runs into the streams. All of the goodness, <clears throat> all the leaves, goes down into the seas, into the lakes, into the rivers. There is an enormous food chain and food web, and the greatest food webs on the planet are in the oceans, <clears throat> and they start with bacterium. And it is the bacterium that eats the leaves that are eaten by other bacterium and bigger single-celled organisms, and so you move up the tree. But 70% of fish is a tree, actually comes from what a tree has discarded. <clears throat> so if you destroy the trees, you also destroy the lively the fish and virtually every living thing in the oceans. <clears throat> But there is one more stage to this, and I'm sorry the answers are so long, but they're very important. You have bacterium floating on the surface of all oceans and seas. They're called cocolithopores. And cocolithopores are essential to your German survival for one reason, and that is they produce a chemical called dimethyl sulfide. That is the only chemical on the planet that is known to be able to produce or uh, which is used chemically in the production of clouds. <clears throat> they produce dimethyl sulfide as we breathe out carbon dioxide. They breathe out dimethyl sulfide. They produce it as a waste product. It goes into the atmosphere. It mingles with chemicals in the atmosphere mm. and it is used and it is the only substance used for cloud formation. <clears throat> now, the cocolithopores are very, very sensitive to carbon dioxide coming down as acid rain or coming in as acid water. When you destroy the trees, the trees, by virtue of the fact that they grow, they take a huge amount of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and they use it with photosynthesis to make sugar to make themselves grow because it's what's inside all of their cells. When yeah. you destroy the trees, the Carbon dioxide will increase on the surface of the oceans and you will also have a cloudless planet. <clears throat> so by putting these satellites up and if the people thinking about this had more than two brain cells that they could actually connect together and they asked any scientist with any knowledge what would happen, we could tell them. <clears throat> but the the... If that goes ahead, then Earth is, is on a path to destruction because satellites don't have 
off switches. You can't suddenly say, whoops, a bit of a mistake here. We need to go up and switch off two, three hundred thousand satellites because when they're up and running, they're up and running. So the answer to your question, sir, for all of those reasons is that you will destroy the planet and virtually everything on it apart from bacteria. Yeah. Allow me a, a more technical question concerning satellites. Yeah. Uh, you, you said this uh, about 60 miles up, there's this uh, ionosphere layer that is in uh, stages. Yeah. That is in some sense um, conductive and so I understand you can, from the Earth, uh, send waves to this layer and have it re have uh, the radiation reflected back to the Earth. Yeah. But how can you penetrate this from above, from a satellite that is above this height? Well, you can. Um, it, it will go straight through. Um, if it is above the, the ozone layer, um, you just aim it down directly. It will only reflect at an angle. I see. Um, rather like sunshine on on a, on a a window. If the sun yeah. is directly on the window, it will come straight through. If the sun hits strikes a window, some of it will come through. Some of it will be reflected. But there's an even more dangerous aspect there. And a lot of people say that this is already being done, um, is that if you beam microwaves down at a particular wavelength onto the planet directly, what you can do is set up standing waves on the planet, inside the planet, where the waves will get bigger and bigger and bigger and Mathematically and theoretically, it is then possible to trigger earthquakes. Whether this has been done, I don't know. But mathematically, it is certainly possible if you s set up standing waves to trigger an earthquake. <clears throat> yeah, I see. Or, or change the weather. You can also change the weather by warming up the atmosphere and just changing one of the jet streams. And one of what, what people don't realize is that the, the Earth moves in cycles. You have the carbon cycle, you have the rock cycle, you have the ocean cycle. Um, and some of these cycles are tens of millions of years. And when you start changing these cycles, because they are all interlinked, you, you can't change one cycle without affecting the others. You have the deep ocean thermal cycles. Uh, there are loads of them. And when you change one, you then you start changing all of the others. And what you could be doing, and oddly enough, um, uh, th th there's a, a, a doctor um, uh, who wrote this uh, very recently, and, and I think it was only yesterday somebody said to me, somebody said, a, a doctor, and I don't know his specialism, said that what we are doing is we are probably putting the evolution of the planet back about two million years. And that is on, uh, and you, you don't have to, you, you can scrub this bit off, but if anybody wants more, um, uh, a gentleman came here not too long ago, uh, Sir Julian Rose. Sir Julian Rose came here um, in this country. He's knighted by the Queen. Um, and he is rather worried about this. And he was at my house here all day asking me specific questions on the environment. And he's put it on, I don't have a computer, he's put it on uh, something called YouTube. And if you type in to YouTube Sir Julian Rose and Barry Trower, uh, it's Barry, B-A-R-R-I-E, 
Trower, T-R-O-W-E-R. If you yep. type that in, in the comments underneath is this um, doctor who said uh, that you are, um, we're putting evolution back uh, around 2 billion years um, or 2 million years. And he's absolutely correct because in answer to your question, it's what we are going to do. We are going to put evolution back at least a few million years, hmm. probably billion. So concerning, um, just coming back on what you said about weather with these microwaves and this, this effect, standing waves, etc., one, one would be able or one is able to influence weather to, to trigger storms or such uh, effects? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and in fact, um, weather has been changed already. I know it has. Um, it's used in warfare. <clears throat> um, I, I do know, and they, they didn't use microwaves, but it, it's a similar process. Um, during the Vietnam War, uh, the Americans changed the weather over Vietnam <clears throat> so the Vietnamese could not get their supplies to where they were needed. Um, changing weather is a great specialism, and it is incredibly easy to do, uh, and it's even easier with the machines like HARP, uh, the, the, the big um, sort of 140 transmitter arrays, I think that it's 140, something like that, that they have, uh, and it's incredibly easy. People have written books on it. Um, on, on how you can change weather. But the problem is, when you've changed weather, you, you can't change it back. Uh, and that's the problem. Uh, I, I think this is the, one of the most, or the most dangerous thing now <clears throat> facing the planet. We, we've had something like this before. Um, when the scientists tried to stop lead in petrol, And in fact, they took the yes. industry to court. The petroleum industry took them to court. But the industry won <clears throat> with their very expensive lawyers. Um, and the scientists trying to stop lead in petrol failed. And there isn't a single part of this planet now, from North Pole to South Pole, where you cannot detect lead from petrol that has been released into the atmosphere, come back down onto the planet, and they can find it now in the snow in the North Pole and the South Pole. <clears throat> There's not a single part of the planet that has been uncontaminated. And when you think of the lead in petrol, the danger that it's been to children's brains, asthmatics, the number of deaths, must be phenomenal <clears throat> now that was bad enough this is is going to be much worse uh, by comparison <clears throat> um, and just the other thing if if you do have scientists uh, and i do know german scientists uh, are are immensely clever <clears throat> and some of the best research papers have come out of your country um, if you have scientists who are listening <clears throat> and would like me to run through, if you'd like me to run through um, the parts of the brain that are mostly involved or the cellular process, <clears throat> just for those, um, just let me know. Yeah, thank you for this uh, indication. We will Some come back to this. Um, now let me conclude a bit towards uh, the preventive measures or protective measures that are possible. In a previous talk, you spoke about the fact that there are countries who want to protect their population from microwave radiation. Which countries are these and what kinds of protective measures are being taken? Right. Um, <clears throat> now, there are, um, in fact... 58% of the world are taking uh, some sort of measures to protect their pregnant women and their children. Now, I have to be very, very careful here 
Because the moment a country says, we are going to do this, the industry moves in with lorry loads of judges and barristers and legal people <clears throat> and start causing trouble. Um, I can tell you what has been published, and that is um, in China. Um, for instance, if you are a pregnant woman in China, uh, you have to wear a protective piece of clothing across your womb. And in fact, if you don't, you can be arrested. Very nice country as far as I can tell, but you can be stopped in the streets by the police who will say, show me your protective clothing. So they are protecting the womb. <clears throat> I do know in Israel and uh, some of the European countries that France in particular, <clears throat> that uh, microwaves are being taken out or have been taken out of kindergartens, nurseries, schools, public mm. libraries, colleges, universities, where uh, young people study or women are of childbearing age. I do know in the Soviet Union that they are physically going around pulling down transmitters, <laughs> but, but they would do out there. They're, they're not even bothering to ask that they're just actually going around pulling them down where they won't where they don't want them <clears throat> um several countries are refusing smart meters uh, on the grounds of the, the fact that they are far too dangerous and the industry have been misleading people about their lethality and how they really work uh, and I'm trying to think of those, but I, I'm not sure I can. I know who they are, but I don't think I can say over the air. But you, you, you'll have to take my word. Yeah. That I do know there are several countries now refusing smart meters, which are wireless. <clears throat> you can you can have smart meters. And one of the symptoms, one of the uh, problem solving cures here is to have a smart meter which is connected to fiber optic cable um, then there is no problem um, the, the problem yeah. are the wireless smart meters because they work on the Wi-Fi frequency and the Wi-Fi frequency is a known and proven weapons frequency <clears throat> but I do know 58% of the planet are taking uh, steps to protect their countries and that puts you in rather a dilemma in, in your German country because if you do nothing then what you have as a world situation <clears throat> is countries that are having healthy children born and their population increase which means they are going to be looking for more land. And you have 42% of the planet where the population is going to be sick and decrease, and you are going to be vulnerable to um, uh, immigration, mass immigration. <clears throat> and this was voiced by President Putin um, and, I, and I have the document when somebody said to him, would something to do with the Cold War? Would you ever envisage uh, invading America? And he laughed and said, what's the point? He said, in three or four generations, they won't have enough people to build their nuclear power stations, build their rockets, run their nuke, run their uh, you know, atomic warships. <laughs> he said, you know, in three or four generations, anybody will be able to walk in. Uh, and he's absolutely correct. Um, and and this, is, this is where it becomes not an industry, we're going to make lots of money on this. This mm. becomes 
then a political question on exactly do you want to protect your country? <clears throat> yeah. um, and you find when you start looking, <clears throat> and I go back to my Cold War days, um, uh, and the, the people that were arrested that I spoke to were commonly known as spies or traitors. <clears throat> the ones that um, sort of gave the spies the information uh, were, were traitors, and traitors were the people <clears throat> who really sacrificed their countries uh, for whatever reason they chose. Now, when you look in Germany, look at your decision makers Look at the people who are actually saying, we will have smart meters, we will have this, we will have that. <clears throat> and then say to them, where have you got your information from that shows it will not harm this country? And they will point upwards to somebody else. And you go to them. And you ask them the same question, and you will keep going up. <clears throat> and I have been to countries, and one of them was Malta. I have been to countries where only one person made the decision and signed for the entire country. One person. And in some countries... You find that, uh, and it, 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 it's to do with 58% of the planet, you will find that the person who made the decision for your country doesn't even have your nationality. They are a different nationality altogether. And they are advising people in your country um, on their benefits uh, but you're, you're down to when you chase it and get a good investigative reporter on it. And I bet you don't have more than three people in the whole of Germany who are making the major decision. No more than three people. <clears throat> and they are the hmm. ones, for whatever reason, are selling out your country because they will know what they are doing. Yeah, so... That's already one point that is uh, on my next question. That is finding out these responsibles in the background or high up who are approving of these of these things. Well, I, I can tell you who it is for Europe. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there are three or four different bodies. The International Commission for Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection Uh, and there are two others, but it's basically the same people who give each other jobs from one organization to another to another. And there are only organizations, <clears throat> and I think you're looking at about 24 people who are controlling 42% of the planet. Um, hmm. And not one of them are elected. Not one. They are all self appointed not one of them are elected um <clears throat> and, and i'm trying to think of the other two but 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 i can't but there are only three uh generally three and the main one is the international commission for non-ionizing radiation protection hmm. um yeah and they are self-appointed people <clears throat> um and it started with uh Uh, I do know that the head of one, or was the head of one, <clears throat> um, was the leader of the World Health Organization. And he was also, at the same time he was the advisor to the World Health Organization, um, Mike, Mike Rappacioli, Michael Rappacioli, um, now I believe he's the University of Rome, Uh, he was the chair of one of these committees, <clears throat> but also a paid consultant for the industry. And what you have is people who are self-appointed microwave experts 
setting a guideline, it's not law, this is a guideline, that for some reason other countries choose to follow. Um, and it's 42%. It's basically the Americas, Canada, Europe, Australia, and New Zealand. They are under the domain of these three organizations. <clears throat> uh, but you will find they are self-appointed um, and they appoint their own ambassadors in countries. And mm. because of the income, which is phenomenal, um, the governments are only too eager to believe them. <clears throat> um, and the other problem, sir, is that the big media barons that own the satellites and the television companies and the newspapers are also members of these people or fund these people or work with these people. <clears throat> there are very few, if any, independent media companies. There used to be hundreds of them that could tell the truth. Now, hmm. they don't tell lies, but they withhold the truth. That is the yeah. difference. Just uh, one last question. Are there any alternatives to this microwave system in order, if one wants to realize this technical purpose of connecting objects, connecting people in, in a mobile network? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. That is a brilliant question, sir. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> you, do, you do not have to have microwaves in the atmosphere. You could do away with all of them. And in fact, the system would actually work better. <laughs> And that, that's the silly thing about this. Um, you could have a better system with no fear of danger. Um, and it's very simple. <clears throat> all you need to do is fit fiber optic cable from your computer to the transmitter. That is all. You take the microwaves out of the air. If you have just microwaves in the air for the military and the police, that would be insignificant. The power, although dangerous, would be so low, the risk would be worth it. But even then, you don't need them because you could use radio waves you could come out and use different wavelengths. You do not yep. need microwaves. You could use in the house, and you could use what they call Li-Fi or light. Um, that would work. The only reason that you are using microwaves, and it's a very simple reason, is that in 1999, between 350 and 500 of the world's most powerful companies decided on that particular wavelength without talking to people like me, which is in fact the most lethal wavelength to cause brain damage. <clears throat> um, you have 500 of the world's most powerful countries that have now set up the groundwork and everything needed <clears throat> to get Wi-Fi everywhere including smart meters. Hmm. And what they can't do now, because the genie is out of the bottle, is say, whoops, I'm sorry, we're going to cause more suffering and deaths around the world than the plague of 1664 and 1340-something. We are going to cause more suffering and death than the plagues around the world, uh, which they are. And so what they have done is they have built in exclusion clauses. You will find that the people that sign for these to be in their houses, in their schools, in their colleges, in their government buildings, the, the people that sign and to have the transmitters on their land, <clears throat> they take full legal liability. The insurance companies have pulled out. They did that years ago. And 
you will find that the companies now, the 500 big Wi-Fi conglomerates, the most powerful industries on the planet, they are now legally free because the liability is spread right across the populations. So they are saying now, well, you don't have to have it. You have it by choice apart from smart meters. That is a sticky one where the lawyers would love to get involved because with smart meters, they are saying, we are putting this into your house by force. We are putting this outside your house by force. And it, it could be the other side of the wall to a child's cot. They are saying, we are putting these uh, everywhere and you are going to be in, in nursed in this mesh, which is a lot more dangerous than they're letting you know. Um, that is by force. And that is a different kettle of fish because I think they can then be taken to court uh, and they can be uh, tried. Um, I, I don't know where the, the law stands on that. Um, but the only reason you're having these is because of this conglomerate that is making, and I think today is worth 17 trillion euros. Uh, but everything could be safer, but it is less profit because they would lose profit laying down the infrastructure for all of the fiber optic cable. They would lose profit developing the Li-Fi. They would lose profit changing to a different wavelength because all the operators would need slightly adjusting. <clears throat> so this is the most profitable one. And it is the most legally free one, apart from smart meters. And I suspect the people that have smart meters take responsibility when it's on their land. Um, but there is the answer. Um, you, you have the 500 most powerful countries saying, if you don't like it, um, it's your fault. And as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. We are really thankful that you could uh, give us this time and answer these questions in such a detailed manner. 